We also can lock it from that side, and if we want to lock it from the inside, we use a padlock. We have found spare parts in the most unlikely places in little mountain villages and whatnot. We decided that we didn't have any windows uh, on the sides. We wanted to keep it as stealthy as possible. Isaac and I, we met in Roatan, Honduras. We were both doing scuba diving over there. I'm Polly. That's Isaac. Hi. And welcome to our van. Hi guys, welcome to the kitchen. So with a box truck, we have a lot of space from just getting the extra foot and a half in width. We got left with a lot of design decisions to make and you could arrange things in a lot of different ways. Uh, we decided to end up having a real deep counter. Uh, a lot of the vans will shorten that out. But again, as you can see, you have a lot of walk around space and it gives us a lot of space for chopping and whatnot uh, whilst we're cooking in the kitchen. We went with a relatively small sink, uh, but it's big enough for all our needs. Covered with the chopping board, gave us a little bit more uh, counter space when we're prepping food. And the mirror up top kind of doubles as having a little evening bathroom routine or brushing your teeth and whatnot. And then we went with a movable camping stove. So part of this was so that we could cook indoors and outdoors if we wanted. A big part of the van life is obviously living out of your van. And if you remove that there, you end up with a lot of space, uh, whether you're prepping your veg or even as a standing workstation if you want to do. Uh, you can see the chopping board at the back there, magnetic knife rack, obviously don't leave any knives when we're in transit. And then soft storage just has been a great decision for us. It means that everything has the ability to move around when you're driving and it doesn't seem to cause any damage. And having the deep counter space meant that we have a lot of storage underneath the kitchen. Uh, our entire water system is actually based in this cabinet here and that runs through the tap and we have a shower that goes out the back as well but it means it's all self-contained inside and we can refill it from wherever we end up turning up at taps and hoses uh, you also get a lot of under counter space here so we have everything from toiletries pantries cookware things like that all fits underneath here and the reason we position the max air fan above there is just to be able to extract while you're cooking and then during the rest of the day you can obviously turn it to cool everything down Isaac and I, we met in Roatan, Honduras. We were both doing scuba diving over there and we were looking at moving on from Roatan and our visas were running out so we decided what would be the next best plan. And I have always wanted to convert a van and he has already converted vans. So we thought it might be a cool idea to convert a van together and travel Mexico. Yeah, when we were converting it, we had a little bit of a time crunch. Um, Traveling on the S, they only get 90 days in the country if you're from the UK. So when we landed in Alabama, it was very much, let's search for a vehicle, buy a vehicle, convert the vehicle, and then make it to the Mexican border within three months. Um, so yeah, it was a, it's a basic conversion, but it was a really cool experience. I think for being able to park in a similar size space to my previous van, I can't get over the amount of interior space we've ended up with. Uh, the fact that you can literally walk through, uh, I mean, I'm 6'1", and I don't bump my head anywhere, that's crazy to me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it really chucked with the vehicle we ended up picking. So we're still in the kitchen, but just on this side now. We have our floor to ceiling storage, which we decided to do to utilize all of our space because it's so tall in here. Up top, we just have extra pantry storage. We've got our mini fridge, which stays on 24 seven. We've got some extra cookware in here. It's actually so organized now. And on this side, we have all of our hooks, we hang our towels and sweatshirts, hats, whatever kind of needs to be hung. We have our lovely bench area, which I decided to add a cushion for because I want it to be comfortable. And then underneath, we kept it open. We have open storage, so we keep towels and our projector in there. We like having movie nights. We have our trash can and we have our toilet that can slide out very easily whenever we use it. And then on this side, we have our great door, which moves and slides we also can lock it from that side and if we want to lock it from the inside we use a padlock we added these curtains that are thermal and it really helps with the heat and the cooling if our cab's super warm and we're just blocking out light altogether. and our last thing over here is our electrics which isaac will tell you about okay so at the bottom of the floor to ceiling unit um we have our tool storage but then it also doubles as our electricity cabinet down here we've got our agm batteries we've got our inverter we've got all the fuses and stuff relatively easy accessible from the inside we have solar up top 
and a DC-DC unit as well that combines with the MPPT. So as we drive, it charges and the solar can also trickle charge the battery, which is great. We like keeping that accessible. Obviously when a fuse blows or whatnot, it's great to just have a little cabinet that you can go into and not be crawling under the bed as I've done in a previous build. And also it allowed us to have things like the electric panel. We've got our 12 volt switches. These control a series of strip lights throughout for a bit of mood lighting. We can see the battery voltage, which is great. And then we've got our 120 volt outlets down here as well. The inverter switch is here, but as Polly said, so far so good as far as never having to switch the inverter off. Living in a small space and traveling in places you're not familiar with, you've got to be really flexible and you've got to be willing to take recommendations from anyone and everyone. You just got to be flexible and enjoy it. You know, we will plan to go here, stop to get gas or do that, and then learn of a new place and kind of detour, make it to a cooler place that we were aiming for. It's a really neat way of living, you know, you never have a, well, we never have a set plan. We just kind of take it day by day and figure out the next place. Like this festival, we had no idea what was going on. We learned about it on a different beach and then turned up a couple of days later and it's been a really cool experience. I didn't even know there were van, <laughs> van festivals that go on. Yeah. So now we're in the bedroom slash living area. On this side, we have our hidden storage, which we like to keep our window covers in. We made custom ones for these little oval windows and one for our skylight. And it has magnets to keep it closed. And then we decided, originally we were gonna do a drop down table, but every inch and centimeter really counts in a van. And we decided to go with a folding up table with hinges and we can eat from the bed, you can eat from the bench. But we ultimately did it because we have a projector, like I said earlier, and we hang it over there and project a movie to this wall, watch movies at night. It's really great. On this side, we have extra storage. Up top, just like random activity things, yoga mats, hammocks. On bottom, we keep our shoes in there. I went with decorative stuff because I just like it to feel very homey. Um, our bed is a full double and it is stationary, it doesn't move, doesn't do anything, fancy, it's all wood. And then underneath we have soft bins, we both have two clothes bins each, and then that just covers this area. On that side of the bed we have hard tubs that we keep our adventure stuff in because we're both scuba divers, and we have other little toys and things that we like to keep away and only get out sometimes. And you can access them from the back, but if it's bad weather, we'll pull out our bins and you can pull them forwards as well. On that side of the bed, we have another little cabinet and it has random things that we keep in there, just extra storage. And it's another place where we can put extra blueies that are seven gallon. They fit perfectly and you can slide them to the back and pull them out through the front. We also have a very handy laundry basket that fits perfectly in this little nook over there. I spent forever looking for that, but eventually found the one that I really liked. So to carry on, uh, Polly mentioned the skylight before. Coming through Mexico, we decided that we didn't have any windows uh, on the sides. We wanted to keep it as stealthy as possible. Uh, as you'll see outside, it is a big black box truck, a uh, very common vehicle here in Mexico, 35 years old and a bit beaten up. Um, so we wanted to be able to park anywhere, street camp, stealth camp, and not worry about people looking in. So we went for this big skylight, as you can see, lots of natural light. We ended up again custom building that out of sheets of acrylic because the way that these old box vans are set up, uh, none of the factory bought stuff could really fit within the certain ribs and whatnot of the roof. And then the roll-up door, we decided to keep the roll-up door from the van. Again, from the outside, it looks great, it looks stealthy. Uh, and there is nothing we like more in this van than to throw the whole door up when you parked at a beach like this and it's potentially the biggest opening I think we've seen even here at the festival. It allows you to walk obviously in and out. You can enter through the cab but we prefer using the little walkway here uh, and as Polly said we can access all the toys from the outside. And between the skylight and the windows I feel like we get enough natural light. We're enjoying it. Obviously the cab's great and we can open those curtains to get even more in if we need to. So for me, this is my first van life experience. 
and I've always wanted to do it. And I think if anybody has a desire to do it, you should definitely go out and try it. It has been so much fun. It's all the freedom I've wanted. You know, you meet all these people, you see all these new places that you would not see if you flew into one spot and were just there for, a, you know, a week or whatever it might be. The freedom of customizing your own build and doing it all in your own specific way and being able to cater to all of your own individual needs, whether it's the gear that you store under the bed mm -hmm. or the number of people you're going to travel, or, you know, having two people, it's really nice to have the extra space in the walk around room um, is awesome. But I would also say that the amount of vans flying around at the moment, like, why not just pick one up, rent it, do a little road trip and see oh, how yeah. you like it, you know? It makes it so accessible and, I mean, we're big advocates of the van life. This is my second build. We, we enjoy the freedom that it affords us. But there's so many easy ways to just dip your toe in the water and see how it's going to be before making a big commitment to, to a build yourself, which I would recommend. <laughs> so welcome to the cab. Old school cab, all still original, 1987 Chevy G30, high cube. It's a Julie box truck, which helps us a little bit with stability. Uh, and again, knock on wood, we are yet to get stuck in the sand on Baja. Poly like replaced all like the window seals, the latches, like this thing was in a sorry state when we picked it up. The extra width that we gained inside, you do sacrifice with a little bit of drivability when you're driving through Mexico. A lot of the cities, the driving here can be pretty crazy and you end up with quite a few blind spots, especially without the windows in the back. But that is why we installed the cameras that we've got. So we've got a reversing camera up top and then I've also got a second camera on my right hand mirror, um, which you can toggle between on the screen here. And it just gives you that extra kind of like surround view of all the traffic and whenever you're backing up or even on the beaches when you're trying to avoid the soft sand. But yeah, it drives really well. I would say one of the biggest things about having such an old vehicle here in Mexico is that there's not a mechanic that we've met that has not, it's not been his bread and butter. It opens up and there's a big sigh of relief. Uh, we have found spare parts in the most unlikely places in little mountain villages and whatnot. Um, but yeah, everyone knows it. Everyone knows how to fix it. It's a really uh, cool vehicle to kind of get to grips with yourself because I said, under the hood, everything's very basic. And then, yeah, so far drives like a charm. Thanks for coming to our van tour. We love showing you guys around. If you want to see any more information about the build or any of my previous builds, they're all documented on my Instagram, Isaac underscore Cal 96, and you'll see Polly tagged in all the most recent posts. And yeah, hopefully see you guys on the road.